Hello everyone and welcome back to my Asteroid Defense series in Kerbal Space Program point two three point five. And uh, and here are our asteroids, some of them tracked, some of them not. These are uh, big asteroids. This uh, well, one of them is definitely extinction level sort of stuff. I mean we're talking about class E and considering how small Kerbin is, the class E will do some pretty serious damage. So uh, we have to worry about these encounters, and uh, especially with the Class E one, we've got 36 days to do something about it. Uh, though it has a periapsis, so actually it's not going to slam into Kerbin. But we don't want to take any risks, you know how these uh, maneuvers and plotting stuff goes. By the time it actually gets into the Kerbin system, it uh, might be a little bit closer than that. This other one is going to smash into Kerbin, it doesn't have a periapsis, but it's only a Class C. But hopefully we can do something about it before it arrives. Uh, probably not though. Uh, the best thing we can do is do some science around the moon. The Ker Kerbals have realized that the craters on the moon have likely been produced by asteroid impacts. And so doing some science around the craters of the moon might help them to figure out what to do about these asteroids, the composition of the asteroids, how heavy the asteroids might be, and how they might push them around. So let's go to VAB and prepare a moon mission. So as usual we're going to assume that speed is essential and I'm going to dump the solid rocket boosters because I'm not comfortable with them being uh, used at all actually. Um, and we're going to try and do as much moonar science as we can in this one mission. So we'll carry all that stuff with us but let's try and get some boosters on the side so that we can be helped along our way. And let's make them big boosters. Now we've got uh, the new joints so hopefully this will be a thing that can be done. I'm going to replace the ones that don't gimbal with the rockets that do because we've got those now. So I'll put that on the center and on the on the outside there. We need some nose cones. And if we really don't need any extra struts, uh, this should be fine, right? So uh, let's cross our fingers about that. Uh, I think our Kerbal might need some extra battery power, so I'm going to slap uh, one more of those on there. And uh, do we... We haven't unlocked the lights yet, so that's not a thing. And we don't have any reaction control systems, so that's not a thing. We do have separatrons, which would make this uh, safer in terms of how they separate. But uh, let's go the quick and dirty way. And I'm going to only light this after these are expended. We don't have fuel lines, so uh, if we actually ran it at the same time, it would run out first, which we don't want. Okay, uh, with that, let's let's give this a proper name. Let's just call it Mooner One, just so we know what it is. All right, and with that, let's go out to launch pad and get. Uh, should we only have three astronauts? Well, for for now, we'll just stick to it, and it has to be Jeb. So let's uh, let's send Jeb. This is obviously not a landing on the moon. This is just going to be science around the moon, taking a look at craters and perhaps finding some sites to land upon. All right, so let's let's head out. You know, think about. It. I, I hope this will get off the ground. I, I I didn't really calculate this at all. I did not run any numbers in my head. I'm just uh, going on faith here. So uh, yeah, Jeb, uh, let's see if you can get off the ground here. Oh, yes, you can. Sorry, it's nighttime, but uh, but our rocket looks stable. Actually, I should have done a direct ascent to the moon. Uh, I, f I remember uh, figuring that out. I I'm sure I can figure it out. Oh, it's uh, when when the moon comes over the horizon. So you'd want to launch from like around here, and then the moon would come over the horizon, and you could uh, go s go over there direct. But uh, obviously, we're on completely the wrong side right now, so we can't do that. Alright, separation is good. 
and actually maintain stability through all that, so very nice. Okay, I'm gonna cut here. And ooh, well let's let's actually let's with the new maneuver node system I'm going to do the both calculations simultaneously. I mean of course the old maneuver system did allow to plot for multiple maneuvers, but I never felt like doing it because there was a high probability I would lose the maneuvers anyway, and they would be useless regardless. So, it takes a lot of time sometimes to do these maneuvers. Uh, I mean, to plot them. We're going to get into lunar orbit anyway, so I'm not going to do anything too fancy. Just get in close. And it's essential to get in very close because we want the low lunar orbit reading. So let's get that. And how much is this one? That's 841. That's fine. That'll, that'll do. We'll be good. I think we'll uh, still be on this stage when we arrive at the moon. Torque is a very tenuous thing right now, though. We're gonna have to get uh, some readings in the high carbon orbit. We'll be getting there, so... Gotta remember to do that. Crew report should definitely come around the moon. Okay, so this looks good. Let's do this here. Just want to match the periapsis as long as I do that, it'll be... Well, I don't know. It should be alright. Oh, that's too far. Well, that does well, that'll be alright. Let's get rid of this one. Let's see, how much is that? Uh, 76? Well, we can fix that too. Okay. Within 50 is fine by me. So, let's turn towards our next maneuver. And I think I'll be plotting many, many maneuvers in this series. Uh, chances are, trying to get to an asteroid I mean, that's something I've never tried, right? Unlike everything else, I don't know the orbital parameters of these objects necessarily. I mean, I could uh, sort of eyeball it, and if we were tracking them, we might get a periapsis around the sun, and that would be helpful. But, but I, it would be tricky to calculate the, um, the phase angle that I need to intercept them. So I don't exactly know when would be the best time to leave Kerbin. It'll all be trial and error. Um, if I was NASA, I'd be able to figure it out, but, but right now I can't. Um, it would be nice if they would give us the orbital parameters when we're tracking these objects so that we could make such calculations should we want to. I don't know, um, yeah, but anyway, that's, that's, that's all later. Let's just get to our maneuver node and start on the way to the moon. We're sort of here right now. Okay, I think we should start burning. Well, we might just run out of this stage. Okay, let's see how this works. Let's check mark that. And, oh, we're smashing into the moon. Oh, we don't really want to do that, do we? 
Well, let's correct that out here somewhere. And not too much. Okay. We're all set for the moon, folks. We are going to the moon. Let's, let's actually point towards it for once. Yes. Okay. Now we want to get the high over Kerbin readings. Let's get to a thousand kilometers for that. I think we can get here, can we? Yes, high over Kerbin. Excellent. Keep that data. All right. With that, we can uh, proceed on to the moon. Uh, as usual, the transition between spheres of influence is not a thing that I can cross while recording and expect to keep recording so let me skip right over this and here we are in the Mooner Sphere of Influence let's not go too quickly here I'm going to get into oh I should have had an EVA uh, also not just uh, get the goo sample but EVA at high over Kerbin uh, yep that should be a thing I'll do have him do that on the way back. I'll definitely have him EVA here high over the moon though. And we'll have to do a goo experiment as well. Okay, that's tight enough. Alright, so yeah, Jeb uh well let's do the goo experiment here. So we'll we won't have had done any uh goo experiments around uh low over the moon. Keep this data. Jeb, EVA please. Be report. I have the moon. Recorded observations. Board. And let's do the crew report here. Cold gray surface looks really beat up with craters. That's why we're here, Jeb. That's why we're here. Okay. Now we've got our maneuver plotted. Let's aim for it and then get in closer. Actually, maybe I should do the Science Junior High as well. Then, then we can just do everything else low uh, on the next mission. So let's observe materials bay here. High radiation environment cause a few of the samples to glow. Uh, will be fun to paint rockets with this. We're going to get this a lot in uh, stock ASB. I really wish they just take the crowdsourced commentary and uh, integrate it into the thing so that we don't have to see all that again. Alright, but uh, that's another thing. Yeah, there's a um, crowdsourced uh, collection of little blurbs like that that you can add to KSP. but of course I'm playing completely stock here so I'm not going to add those much as out of all things to change that would be very tempting it's especially always disappointing to get the one with the high the 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 glowing samples that they can paint rockets with that 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 one that one always gets me okay uh we're making like we are right around the moon here And let's start burning. Okay, that is good enough. We are 59 by 22. Okay, uh, so Jeb, just, uh, just get some stuff going here, huh? Yep, EVA. And Highland Craters. Don't see that one too often, so good. That is a good thing. Uh, 
Now before we go to the nighttime side, let's see what observations we can make here. Midlands. Well, we're going to get a lot of that. All right. So, nighttime side. Uh, I guess we can throw them out once, just for the heck of it. But most of the observations will have to be on the light side, just so we know where things are, right? And how you can observe the nighttime side anyway is beyond me. Uh, Jeb has night vision of some kind. Kerbin! Kerbin and the sun. Okay, take a peek here. Highlands, okay. Not highland craters, just highlands. Let's see if we can get one of those big craters, shall we? Uh, we seem to be crossing the bottom edge of this one. Let's see if that works. Northwest crater, excellent. Very northwesty. Okay, good. Uh, how about right around here? This looks very craterish. Nope, just Midlands. Seem to be crossing the northern edge of this one. Let's try and get this. East crater. Good. There's uh, some sort of basin here. Try and get that. Nope, just highlands. Looks lower, but whatever. Something going on around here. Let's try that. Nope, Midlands. Alas. Well, I think for the first mission to the moon, this is quite successful. Now, the thing is, the thing is, we've actually got quite a lot of juice left. Um, what would it take to transfer to Minmus? I mean, we can't do any goo experiments or anything. Oh, that's too much. We can't do any goo experiments or anything, but... Uh, where, where or where would we be with respect to Minmus? Hmm. Well, there's not much chance that we can adjust this. We're we're hitting Minmus orbit right there, no matter what we do, because we're here with uh, here on the moon. This is not the right time to do a Minmus transfer. Uh, Minmus transfer would be practically when they were 90 degrees from each other, I guess. Or maybe even further away than that. I think. Let's see. Okay, uh, I just saw the indicators right of course it's unfair to give Jeb all the fun going to Minmus as well but we, we seem to be getting very close to it huh well we do have a Minmus periapsis in how long eight days that's a long time. And that's because we're going all the way out here. Oh, uh, wait, huh? Oh, uh, yeah, okay, so it's four days out to here. That's too slow. Can we get there faster?
Well, that's seven days. And how much is this particular maneuver? Well, not too bad. 161 there. Huh. Barely encountering it six days. How much? 240. I mean, we're gonna send another mission to Minmus, but it is, it does seem to be a waste of fuel if we don't do something. Hmm. All right, well, let's let's fling him out to Minmus and see what happens, huh? This is what Jeb is for. Oh, there is electric charge to worry about, though. Oh. Gotta keep an eye on that. Oop. Carbon eclips eclipsing the sun. Doesn't have the same feel to it, but anyway. Let me just make sure. This this one is okay. Show me my maneuver here. One eighty four. This one here is two forty. Yeah, should be doable. All right, here we go. Uh, yeah, everything looks good. Ooh, way off. Okay, well, let's adjust this. Well, we're gonna have to abort this whole thing. Okay. I'm not too sure I'm doing it right by having the adjustment over here, but it doesn't seem too bad in terms of Delta V, so I'll go with it. And I suppose it could be possible to find something closer than this, but... Uh, we'd just be using more and more delta V for every incremental adjustment, so probably not the best thing. Though we do have a lot of delta V still. Okay, we're going out. Away from the moon. We are exiting the moon's sphere of influence and heading out to our maneuver out there. Okay, and here we're going to make a rather drastic course correction. I mean, you can see uh, we're going from this orbit to this orbit, which is sort of weird, but hey, that's what we're doing. It's nice not to be so tightly bound to Kerbin's gravity, so you can do crazy stuff like this. Ooh, that was a little bit weird, too. So many weird things happening. We could return to the moon. No, that's not what we want to do. We want to go to Minmus. Because Jeb is an overachiever, let's face it. Uh, well, let's keep going. Oh, there we go. Alright, check mark. That's good enough for me. Alright. Let us continue, and we will meet up with Minmus. Now this is taking quite a few days, and you know, we've got that one asteroid coming in pretty, pretty soon after this. And this arc in particular is taking way too long, but, you know. Them's the break sometimes. It would take quite a while to get to Minmus anyway. It's usually, I usually think of it as an eight day trip, so. Okay, here we are. Minmus Sphere of Influence. As usual in a very unfortunate orbit. But we're not going to get into orbit, I don't think. Not this time. Uh, EVA Jeb. We're going to record observations high over Minmus. 
And perhaps the safest thing, if we get into orbit, we're going to have, see what's going to happen is, let's say we just get into an orbit directly like this. We're going to have a polar orbit, which would be great for doing science, but not so great for uh, getting back out again and trying to return home. I could calculate, well, let's, maybe I should calculate the delta V that I have left, shouldn't I? Uh, two tons. Let us do the rocket equation thing. Calculator out. And if you don't know the rocket equation, do look it up. It's very helpful, especially in times like this. I think we've got uh, 390 ISP, so we've got about 2000 delta V on this. You know what? That's, that's good enough. Let's get into orbit. Let's actually change their inclination right now instead of trying to do an orbit like this. Uh, let's see. How can we... No, that's not a good thing. That's not too bad. 270 though, wow. Okay, I think we're getting somewhere here. Let's actually not uh, use the inclination one. It looks like uh, all I really needed was this radial one. Okay, and let's say right here, no, 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 right there, we add another maneuver and come on nope it still wants to be polarish no I don't want to be polarish I want to be this wayish how much is this 307 oh it's still very inclined um There we go. Now how much is it? 308. Haha. <laughs> okay, yes, that looks like what I want to do. Let's see if we can hit that. Alright, let's get into Minus Orbit. Jeez. I hope I don't strand Jeb somehow. Here it is, and where's Minus? Uh, that's Kerbin and the Moon, isn't it? And where's Minmus? Can't really see it right now. We are in a weird... Oh, there it is. There it is. We are approaching it at a weird angle. Okay. Let's see how far off we were with that one. Doesn't look like it's changed this one too much. Still vaguely equatorial-ish. Take a look at our current orbit though, wow. Definitely don't want to come back to Kerbin looking like that. Okay, so next maneuver will be very much closer to Minmus. And let's see that happen. Oh, dark side. It's always the dark side. Okay. Jeb is really going above and beyond the call of duty this time. Okay, I think that's good enough. I think uh, as far as inclination is concerned, that's actually better than what we have plotted. Now, let's try and get that a little bit lower.
I don't know if we need to. Let's see. Uh, Jeb, can you? Uh, oh, dark side. Uh, let's let's wait until we get to to see stuff at least. Okay, well that's a start. Yeah, let, let's have Jeb pop out for a sec here. And actually, they'll still test whether the maneuver node is retained. There's still high over Minmus. We've already done that. Okay, maneuver node is retained, so that's that's one little thing that is much improved. I can only imagine the coding that was necessary to get that done. I have no idea. Uh, hopefully that should be close enough. Let's tip it a little bit more. Okay, let's see if this is enough to get a good read on the surface features of Minmus. Oh, come on. Okay, EVA Jeb, please. Yes, good, good. Uh, just above Mimesis Lowlands. Keep data, board, and let's uh, uh, let's just go ahead and circularize our orbit at this height, so that we can take a good look around while we're here. Okay, doesn't look like we're bumping into anything. Now, this looks like it would be something different. Midlands. Indeed. Logic would dictate some highlands somewhere. How about here? Looks pretty high to me. Nope. Well, this is definitely something different. The Great Flats. So, let's look for some lesser flats. Oh, well, this is pretty high. Let's, let's try this. How about Mountains of Minmus? No, Midlands. Wow. Hmm. They are very, not very middle. Now that looks like a bump that could actually knock us. How about that one? Slopes. Fair enough, as long as it's something different. This is a different sort of flats, so let's... Okay, let's just zoom in. Come on. Come on. Just flats, okay. So we've got flats, greater flats, and looking for lesser flats. Uh, do we cross these? There's a little flatty portion here. I don't know if we cross over it though. Uh, it's lowlands. I think we already have it. Let's just check. Yeah, we do. Uh, maybe we still cross over it. Let's go a little bit further. Try again. Nope. Okay, Jeb, I think we want you back now. It's, it's been a long time. Certainly the longest mission we've ever sent out so far. While there's plenty more science to do, I, uh, yeah. I think it's time to call this a mission. Certainly, Jeb is going to be coming back a great hero with this, uh, with these results. So let's add a maneuver. Look at how Minmus's orbit does not seem to be popping up quite as well as I like. Here we go. Now go backwards. Aha. Okay, keep going. And... Uh, 
Let's ensure a return into the atmosphere. Well, without any sort of penalty for re-entering too quickly, I might as well do it like that. All right. And we can dark though it is. Oh, we're going to get those lights, folks. We're going to get those lights. I, I swear, now that we've got colored lights, we've got to do strange things with them. Strange and wonderful things. All right, let's go. Jeb returning home after an excursion around the moon and Minmus. Didn't even just settle for the moon, the sky. That should do just fine for now. I think I should touch maybe the touch off of that. This is a little bit too close. That'll be fine. Okay, I guess we'll just remain retrograde. Okay, yep. Leaving Minosphere of Influence. And on our way back home. Quick trip home too. Not not slow at all. Actually, the round trip to Minmus is about the time I would normally expect to take for... I mean, the round trip uh, of this mission is around the time I would expect to take for just a trip to Minmus. And that makes sense, because the trip to the moon shouldn't have added too much time to it. Okay, well, let's take a look at our approach to Kerbin. There's the moon. And there's home. Hmm, seems like we'd be hitting the dark side like this. Oh well, even more incentive to get some lights next time. We'll do that right away. I don't think we have enough uh, juice to actually decelerate uh, from orbit. So, I mean, if we tried to get into orbit first and then decelerate, I don't think we've got the uh, fuel for that. So, let's just uh, take advantage of the atmosphere as much as possible. I guess we could have uh, used uh, air braking to get into orbit, but... Let's that's yet another complication that I didn't need to add to this very already overly complicated mission considering I was only intending to do the moon this time. Yep, all dark. Nothing for it. Can't even tell whether we're going to be landing on safe ground or not. I think I've got to do some forceful deceleration here. Okay, and with that, ditch stat and parachutes. Up. Oh. Looks like we are over water, or at least something at sea level. So that's good. Splashdown of Jebediah Kerman on the inadequately named Moon One, because of course he went uh, went much further than that. But uh, let's see how much science he managed to collect, shall we? Ah, oh, sorry, Mooner One. Anyway, uh, look at that, 486 science. Ah, uh, only Jeb, right? Anyway, uh, such science, much wow. Okay, uh, let's go to the R&D center. Okay, as promised, let's grab those lights, those newly revamped lights, and let's look for some science. Now we've got a mobile processing lab, so that's science. We've got no science there. I mean, if we're going to plunge ahead with this as quickly as possible, we need to uh, prioritize 
scientific stuff. Um, this has the barometer, but I I continue to hate that. It does have the mobility stuff? That's good. Uh, the probe part is is desirable, but the panels are probably more important if we're gonna run those lights for a while. But let's let's grab the the batteries and the panels. These are the small probe parts. They've revamped the LV-1R, and while everybody it seems to be in favor of the fact that it now has four units of thrust instead of one. I uh, I actually think that it's oversized for ants at this point, and so I really like the old version. I I I had uses for that old version, uh, especially on Minmus. So um, uh, I'm a little bit uh, saddened by that. But anyway, I think uh, I'm gonna hold off on spending any more science at this point and uh, just uh, wrap up for this episode. We did visit um, the moon and Mimus for the first time and we are well on our way to... Oh, actually we should check the tracking center, shouldn't we? Okay, well actually... Uh... Oh yeah, this this one uh, that is scheduled to meet up with us and crash into us hasn't arrived yet. Alright, so we have about seven days for that. Uh, maybe we should send a mission out to it, huh? Well, uh, we, we definitely don't want to miss the chance to get a close look at it before it smashes into us. So, I mean, it's about 7 to 10 meters in radius. Uh, certainly not the largest type out there. But hopefully it'll still land in the ocean so that all it does is make some minor tsunamis instead of smashing into the center of a city, in which case we could have some serious issues. Um, yeah, good thing this much larger one isn't actually hitting us. But perhaps we should take a look at some of these others. Uh, uh, that one we're tracking. Uh, if it's if it's class E, we should definitely track it. I guess we should track it class D too, huh? Uh, how is that going in? Oh, another uh, smashing into us. How nice. Wow, we can, uh, it's, a, it's a wonder why the Kerbals weren't aware of these earlier. Uh, they seem to be, uh, you would expect some malevolent force in the universe as deliberately trying to hurl these at Kerbin suddenly. Anyway, but uh, on that note, uh, I think we'll wrap it up for this time. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.